Our final presentation of today and of the dojo is David talking about building an AMI pipeline with CentOS Stream. Thank you so much for making yourself available for this presentation and thank you all for attending. So thanks, thanks Rich, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, so as many have noticed, I am presenting today in Emacs. This is not a, a, a deep, um, a deep foray into the uh, the amazing power that is Emacs, but we're, we'll just say it's it's text for now. So, um, so let's uh, let's go to um, where's my my introduction go? There we go. Um, I'm David Duncan. I'm a solutions architect, and I work at Amazon. Uh, I work on commercial support by, for Red Hat by day, but um, love to do everything that I possibly can for the Fedora and uh, CentOS teams um, by night. Um, love working on open solutions. So if you're working on something and you think that there's a great place for it, I've done a couple of talks on OS build and and the use of of um, the tools that are available to us in the in in uh, CentOS and Fedora as projects um, to get us. Uh, to get more solutions built. Um, done a lot of OS build work around um, Microsoft SQL and and making lots of other things work. And so I always want to talk about it more with anybody who wants to um, uh, who wants to talk about it. So uh, looking forward to that. So um, I like to build, well, I work at Amazon, so so AWS specifically, and so I, I'm always building cloud images, and it's, it's always an interesting experience to me to get to get another um, uh, another uh, cloud image built and to, to um, find a, a method that just works for whatever it is that I'm doing and whatever environment that I'm working in. And a lot of times I'm working on things like um, reference architectures where, you know, for one reason or another, we're using some specific uh, um, policy-based management tool or, or, or deployment model. And uh, I want to have the same build from one, one uh, deployment method or, or DevOps tool to the next. And I don't want to break down whatever it is that I'm doing so that it fits in insert DevOps tool here. I want it to just work. So that was a, a big part of this for me is that I want to be able to use this in multiple environments. I don't necessarily want to be uh, stuck uh, using it, you know, stuck using a different kind of process in a different environment. Um, and um, so, you know, whether I'm building my images in Jenkins with, with, uh, um, with the, uh, you know, with a with an Ansible script underneath, or if I'm building it out of a CloudFormation template and I'm using a tool like TaskCat to do uh, to do a um, a full scale CloudFormation deployment uh, uh, validation across multiple regions, this is a way that I know I can get the information that I need. Um, so, what is Cloud init? So. I like to think of it as being a series of plugins for scripted modifications to the images, and uh, it uses the data from metadata sources uh, from different providers. And of course, now the uh, the QEMU tools will also use it to um, to build that is uh, that is uh, um, that leverages the ver in the ver or well the verse tools will use it for. Um, for collecting data for the build of an image from an ISO or a network uh, location. Um, and it builds consistently. I want to do this on, uh, on two different environments, then I can do that. There's no, there's no problem there. Um, multiple platforms, so you can, you'll find it's just as, it's just as easy to use on platforms where it's not necessarily the first choice, uh, even the, so if you want to use it, um, there are ways to do that. And uh, you can start anywhere along the path in terms of the, in terms of how you build the, 
the configuration inside of the the cloud configuration. Um, so uh, those are the things that I think are, are really important to know is, you know, the YAML file doesn't have a, have an ordered structure, the structure, the order of that of the operations is uh, managed by which plugins you're using in cloud and it. Um, it always gets a lot of flack for being slow, but, um, but nothing else hits all, all that uh, just the, the attack surface that it has is um, pretty much a, as big as it gets. So, um, uh, it's, you know, it was started by a fellow at, um, I think he was at Canonical when he started it, but he now works, he now works for Cisco. Um, but Scott Mosier and Scott Mosier has has put a lot of time and effort into into building it as a as a project and and there are a number of people who are uh, paid to work on it as well. So, um, so um, I'll get I'll show examples of this, but I want to sort of set the stage and say it's going to pull in information from from a data source. So on AWS, um, I'm where I'm most familiar with this. We we leverage the cloud init, um, or the data source that the that cloud init leverages is the EC2 instance metadata service. Um, the instance metadata service is uh, is a sort of a long-standing tool that's provided information, and uh, I want to make sure you know. Obviously, it's not the only data source, but it's one of the data sources that's there, and that uh, is on a link local. Um, for us, that's on a link local uh, IP address that the instance uses to pull both standard and um, and dynamic metadata, and the uh, cloud init can use both the both the standard uh, instance information, the instance identity document. Uh, configuration that's in there, and also the dynamic metadata, which includes a bunch of things like uh, potentially SSH keys, even <clears throat> for authorization. Um, it starts running before a user has access. The packages run as you know the the details are as, as at the system level. So this is configured uh, pretty much in the same space as you would you would be configuring for. So it runs as root, uh, builds a bunch. Do that. Uh, cloud and it also builds a default user, so that if you're not building a user and you're using an injection system like, uh, like the uh, uh, using the Amazon EC2 instance key pair uh, injection model, it will pull that key from the EC2 instance metadata and apply it and create a home directory and and uh, environment for for a default user with the default configuration. Um, and then you can add application packages, you can add repositories, you can write files, you can modify files. <clears throat> uh, yeah, if you're, so if you're installing tons of, uh, so I see Philippe has a, has a statement in here and he says it can be leveraged to create images with packages bundled instead. Yeah, and in fact, um, uh, you, well, I'll, I'll show you a little bit of how I, I run into that problem and, and we'll, we'll deal with that. Um, so, uh, and you pointed on, you know, you're pointing on something that I think is really, is, is right here, um, which is that when you're using uh, cloud init for configuration, you, you actually only have a good amount of space in, in the cloud init config. So there's only so large that it can be, and I can't remember what the, what the, uh, what the content size is. As itself. Uh, is is there to provide you with the ability to move to a you know to to move your configuration from the simple to complex to the complex by uh, taking some some uh, simple steps. So that is to uh, collect details from some some remote space. So either adding a scripting source from uh, from like S3 or uh, some other object storage or, or a website even uh, to just pull down the information that I want. Obviously, there are security concerns depending on where you're pulling from. 
um, or to use a copper repository to collect the, um, the configuration. So pulling the information that you need is uh, one of those things that I think is very uh, uh, simple. Or you can use an artifact-based system. Um, so I can define this in the build spec for my configurations uh, if I'm using code build, or I can um, I can drop a uh, an artifact into you know, Koji repository, or uh, or a um, uh, or just any kind of location, you know, from or a file file based system for for uh, sloping up at the time that I, that I create it. So I've got some uh, basic examples here. If you're not familiar with the uh, Amazon Partner Networks Quick Starts, I would um, I would recommend uh, taking a look at those for for reference architectures. Um, and it's something that I love to to make a part of the, um, the you know uh, of my uh, conversation every time because I always love the idea that we could be building bigger solutions on uh, CentOS Stream and. Uh, the other tools. So, I'm going to have text here. Let's just do that. There we go. So, if you're creating your cluster and um, and you have a configuration. So Felipe asked about this. This is, you know, you can use an intermediate configuration. So if I've decided that I, I don't want to spend all my time doing a, a DNF config uh, that that uh, adds the repositories for high availability or doesn't or add configuration, then there's lots of things that I can do to, you know, to have intermediate steps. So I can do this over and over again. Uh, if I want to, if I want to produce intermediate artifacts um, as AMIs, so uh, let's say you know I want to I want to add this um, into my configuration. So the configuration script for Cloud Init is a uh, Cloud Config, and in my utility here, I am building a uh, an instance. So my instance is here. Uh, it's this high availability primary instance. I have uh, some properties of that in that instance, including uh, finding the AMI that's going to be associated based on the region and um, and uh, and the deck and just identifying my mapping. And um, uh, that instance configuration includes a user data config. So the user data is where you're. Uh, where you're uh, defining the cloud config. In this case, I'm doing it in a uh, in an action. I'm taking a, a substitution um, function and building this cloud config so that it includes um, a substitution for the region from the cloud formation template. So the cloud template itself has the ability to uh, create a substitution. So in this function, all the way down past writing the files, I have this substitution. So the, so the variable region is going to be replaced with a reference to the actual content of this, um, of this uh, value that's defined um, for the, for the, um, uh, for the, inst the, the template deployment in cloud formation. So I create a cloud config, it starts with this top line. Now, one of the things that I see in a lot of cloud config uh, is that they start by just eliminating the YAML and uh, running a bash script. And that just destroys everything in the, in the process that's going to get you uh, better information than what you have uh, when, you were, when you were building. Um, if you want to have all of the packages updated, before you start doing anything else, you can just start right there. And Philippe, that can take a long time, uh, depending on what you want to do. And now here, this is a plug-in. So each one of these uh, is um, 
corresponds with a plugin in the cloud init configuration and we're we're identifying that when you run this plugin this is what you'll do right on the packages install this is running running on CentOS, so we know it's going to be using dnf or yum depending on what version and uh like it's dnf and then um uh then we come down to this section and we say okay you're going to write files now we're going to create one file that file is going to have this content the content of that file is the bash script okay? um, and this bash script goes and retrieves a set of quick start utilities and then um, and then um, moves into that repository run or sources this this file and then uh, runs the, the established functions from the from those uh, kit scripts and it's in root because that's where we're, we're operating from and then run command is a way to um, run commands on on the configuration and this is an easy way to get a, um, a shell script action or to do some uh, post repo configuration. Um, so let's say I wanted to define my own repo, then I can go back and use that, leverage that repository, but I can't use it in the packages because that will run, uh, that packages plugin will run before the creation of my uh, uh, configuration, uh, my um, repository configuration. Unless I go back and fix the uh, the order in which the order of operations on the cloud modules that are that are associated in the Etsy cloud config and that would require again more configuration on your part than usually what I expect to do um, but if that was part of what you wanted to do in your original you know in your original path that wouldn't be a problem and then um, all sorts of things can be done here <clears throat> mostly I do this in that in this um, uh, schlep, but um, if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to break this out, you can just have a list uh, item or part of this array can be just a, a, a quoted uh, command. Sometimes that does not work in your favor, and uh, that kind of the next step here. Um, let's see. So. Uh, before I go on to uh, debug, let's let's look here at the. Um, this is a certification example that I have for a system under test. Uh, so this is a super simple um, uh, um, configuration. Um, in this case, I don't want it to do anything to the instance except make it possible for me to run run a certification test on it. And uh, so, so I've got a cloud config that is super, super simple, and I'm using it in the context, greater context of a full, full scale deployment on uh, using Ansible. So then now I have this deployment script. Uh, this deployment script that has um, a user data configuration, right? So now I've got the test that says I've got my my test user data, right? So this is looking it up uh, just to make sure that it's there. And then here I'm doing the same, I'm actually doing the same operation even though I could have used the variable. But the but the the goal was to pull that system under test uh, user data configuration into this instance so it has exactly what I expect it to have. Um, and I can do that every time, or I can I can uh, do a preparation. You know, I can do this in preparation for for uh, standard testing across multiple instances. So if I'm testing, you know, multiple versions or multiple kernel revisions, then this gives me an opportunity to uh, to build that and to leverage leverage it in that context. Uh, I, I'm just going to tell you, Shantanu, you, you, you said uh, um, the, any chance to get CentOS Stream up front as well. There's, there's, um, there's a, so for that console, there's a contractual partner requirement there. And that's, that's what you're seeing is that 
there's an association with the behind the scenes with the partner network. But maybe one day we will have um, we'll have a, a, a you know conversation about that, and and I would love to love to to talk more about with you about it with you on offline. So um, these are two of the places that I think it's most most beneficial to see how that how that um, uh, configuration works, and these are not going to be. I think I don't have any kind of real. Um, Terrible things that have happened, but uh, this the the cloud init analyze is your big friend when it comes to uh, what's going on. And what I've done here is just just go ahead and run the analyze blame so that I could look back through the boot record and see if there was a part of one of these plugins that in fact failed, and or if there was some sort of a, a deep concern about. How long it took to, you know, pull information or whatnot, um, and uh, and then what happened in this run? Right? So how long did it take? Did anybody die? Right? That's those are all uh, fun parts of this. And then there's a couple, you know, couple things here like making sure that the fingerprints are are. Uh, are pushed, um, making sure that it, you, if there's a user, there's you know you, that scripted user gets created. A uh, whole bunch of things here, like power state change is great because you, there's something sometimes there's things you want to do that are um, that will um, that will require a reboot before the sec the next operations happen, and some things you want to run before any kind of modifications are made to the system. So there are boot commands. And then there's uh, other things that you may not, you know, um, think are uh, are um, a part of your run. But you know, here, if I wanted to, I could include, you know, other other types of, of configuration requirements. Um, and uh, using the uh, URL function is a great way to uh, kickstart a an Ansible, uh, an Ansible install or, or uh, policy configuration after after the fact. So last thing in the script can be um, can be a pull uh, to that uh, or or to a push to that uh, URL, and then. If you don't see anything that you think is specifically a problem here, uh, the dump is a huge, a huge benefit. Um, there you can you start getting a little bit more uh, granular information on what has passed and what has failed. And I'm sure uh, that you can see if you saw a lot of my runs, you'd see that they have fails. Um, and you can also do some of your early development work um, by uh, creating a, a, the cloud config YAML and then running it um, in a development stage on it already exists. So if you do a, if you do a pre-build, you can have an image, an instance that that you have uh, a clean deployment on, and that. And you can just leverage the the script itself. I usually do it just by uh, creating a machine image and then looking for those. So I had the the one the one question from uh, uh, Philippe. Is there any other questions? Any other um, comments on that? Um, uh, that's interesting. The seriously just like YAML, um, the Etsy that that Etsy cloud uh, cloud .cf is a um, is a great uh, is a great teller tell all for for what's enabled in the in the cloud init configuration, Shantanu.
so uh, yeah, if you so if anybody, I'll say thanks and tell you how much I appreciate you uh, being a part of my um, presentation, and uh, let just let you know that I'd love to hear from all of you. Thank you very much, David, for this presentation. Um, does anybody have any other questions before we end this? All right. Well, thank you all so much for attending our sessions today and yesterday. And uh, we hope to see you again at the next one of these, which presumably will be in early September-ish is kind of our plan right now. And uh, watch our social media and our mailing lists for announcements of those. Thank you, David. And thank you, everyone, for attending. <laughs>